Today on Locked On Red Wings, I pulled Scotty back from the grave to talk about Derek Lalonde as the next head coach of the Detroit Red Wings. Your Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, Brian Fisher and Scotty Bentley. Uh, Scotty's host over at Lockdown Tigers, as well as a freelance journalist for the Detroit News. And I am a producer over at 97 Won the Ticket. Scotty, I'd say a long time no see, but this is actually the second time we've recorded today after you had the day off uh, trying to recuperate from your illness, which you are still battling with pretty hef- heavily, it sounds like. Yeah, that's a, that's a safe bet. Yep. <laughs> We recorded with Sam McGilligan, and that was going to be Friday's episode going on Yurash Slavkovsky and Logan Cooley. Um, but news kind of broke. Uh, Derek Lalonde, like we kind of expected, is the next head coach of the Detroit Red Wings. So that episode Sorry. that we did with Sam is going to be Monday's episode. Um, I'll put a little disclaimer in front of that episode as well once I'm done with this. But, you know, this is kind of pressing. I kind of felt like we should record another episode for Derek Lalonde himself. And Scotty, you know, he spent the last four years with the Tampa Bay Lightning as assistant coach. He was one of Steve Eiserman's last hires in Tampa Bay. And at Eiserman's outro exit interview for the season, he said that when he looks to hire a new head coach, he's going to look to hire somebody with familiarity, somebody he's he knows. And he did just that. I guess my first question is, is how are you feeling? Knee-jerk reaction. How are you feeling about, I know how you're feeling, but how, about, <laughs> how are you feeling about Derek Milan as head coach? Scotty is on his deathbed right now, guys. <laughs> uh, Dylan Larkin is a hockey player. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Um, I'm pumped. I'm, I'm, re- I'm really pumped. I think, um, I think it is, there, there are certainly other moves that that would have been flashier, other other decisions that would have been flashier, or other decisions that um, would have gotten, uh, well, like a like a bigger reaction. Like if we hired ninety one, like you know what I mean? Yeah, like that, that's how people would have freaked out. People would have lost their minds. And um, but I fully support it, and I am absolutely in love with the hire. I think it's a, I think it's a slam dunk. I really do. I, this is a guy that has won everywhere he's been. Uh, there's no NHL head coach experience, but he's had head coaching experience and had an NHL experience. Um, so this will just be the first time that he's putting both of those together. But as a whole, um, like I said, he's won literally everywhere he's ever been at every level he, he's ever been at and he's ever coached at uh, in, in every role that he's been in. So, um, uh, the biggest thing, I think it was Prashant, uh, tweeted out that, um, he talked to, a, a player, a former player who, who played under him and said that, uh, he, he's really, uh, um, incredible on, uh, as a motivator and he, he's a great head coach and, and we'll, I'm sure we'll get into, you know, the actual head coaching style and stuff, but, um, he's, uh, he, from, from what former players players are already starting to to say and, and come out about him he's um he's an incredible motivator and that alone is 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 awesome and i think something that this team has you know without beating around the bush lacked yeah and i i do want to i don't want to like hit you with the 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 fact check you know i'm not snopes out here but um, he did. He did not win a championship at the ECHL or hmm. AHL level because I know if I don't say it, I didn't. I didn't mean. I didn't necessarily yeah, yeah, yeah. mean he'd won a ring. Oh, okay, 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 okay. He, but he yeah, had he found success everywhere. Yeah, and uh, he, he had a lot of success yeah. at the uh, USHL level and the ECHL level. Uh, above 500 hockey coach at the AHL level with the Iowa Wild in his two seasons there. But yes, I I I, I understood what you're saying as he won rings. I'm like, no, nah, I didn't. So oh, yeah, no, yeah. not 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 what I meant. But I I can I can understand. Yeah. How can but go. yeah, I I completely agree with you, Scotty. I think that it's not the sexy move. It's not. But Steve Steve Eisman is not known for making you know sexy moves. He's known for making smart moves. Sometimes the smart move is sexy. 
but he makes the smart move most of the time. He's going to do the move that's going to be the best for the future. And obviously, we cannot know as of right now if this move is going to pan out to be a, the Red Wings being a Stanley Cup contender. But I am 100% okay with, I won't say, it's not even taking a flyer on a guy. Because this is, again, something somebody that Steve Eiserman knew. This is somebody that he hired in Tampa. Somebody that he knew and has now won back-to-back rings with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Got, went to the final this year, came up short. All of that, I, you know, there, there's going to be talks about whether or not his success at the NHL level had more to do with the team he was coaching or had more to do with, you know, him. And I, I know there's going to be a lot of dissenters that say, oh, you took the assistant coach. It's uh, from the Stanley Cup winning Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, like it's Matt Patricia, Bill Belichick all over again. But that's not the case because of what you said, Scotty, because he has had success at every single level. And yes, Jeff Blaschel did have success at the AHL level, especially he had won a Calder Trophy there. But you're not going to get anywhere in a rebuild unless you're willing to take. I, I hesitate to say risk because it's not so much of a risk because, again, Steve Eisman knows this guy and he wouldn't have hired him if he hadn't been incredibly confident in his ability to coach and be a motivator. But yeah, you do take somewhat of a mitigated risk every time you hire a head coach who has never been a head coach at the NHL level. But here were your options. Your options were either you go with Derek Lalonde, who has umpteenth success at every level he's been at. You know, he's been a coach in the CCHA with Ferris State University. He's been an assistant coach at University of Denver. He's been a head coach at the USHL level and won a championship there. A head coach at the ECHL level with the Toledo Walleye and a head coach at the Iowa Wild. And then he went to the Tampa Bay Lightning and won two back to back Stanley Cups. And every single place he's been at where I have win loss records, he has had an above 500 winning percentage even when that team misses the playoffs. So would you say that he won a lot? I would say he won a lot. He is a proven mm. winner, as Scotty Bentley would Interesting. say. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm 100% okay with taking, uh, taking on a first-time head coach, and I know it didn't work out with Jeff Blaschel, but what, what do you want, guys? Do you want – and when I say guys, I'm just talking to the, the dissenters out there. There, there there'll, is no doubt going to be a few – who would have been like, I wanted Tortorella, or I wanted Pete DeBoer, or I wanted Barry. I mean, obviously, I wanted Barry Trotz, but Barry Trotz decided he didn't want to coach. Yeah. This is somebody new and somebody that you don't know what you're going to get. If you hire a Pete DeBoer, you know what you're going to get. And I don't want that. And obviously, Pete DeBoer got, you know, scooped out pretty quickly, but my point still stands. I just don't want somebody who's going to come in, be good for one year, and then lose the locker room in three more years. Like I, I want some a new voice in the NHL to be behind that bench and give somebody a chance, like Eiserman did with John Cooper. Right. I, I think I think that this is. <coughs> I agree. <laughs> I think that this is the perfect time to bring in a first year head coach, first time head coach. I think with with the with where this team is at at the rebuild, you've built the core of players, right? You have a core of players at the NHL level. You have a core of players, um, in in the system in the pipeline. You have the the core of players is there, and you're going to add to it in the, in the draft in a couple of weeks. You have all the cap space. If there was ever a time to bring in a first time head coach at the NHL level, at least. To, to, to be a new leader of men and to come in and, and be a new uh, voice of this locker room, it is right now. And uh, new era, new head coach, you know, you know what I mean? Like that, it, it all matches and, and, and meshes perfectly. Um, I, I, I truly, I really do think that this is a, a home run hire. And, and I think that um, this is a, a perfect timing for a first time head coach. I can want to continue that conversation about what this means for the Red Wings. Cause you brought up some really good points there. Um, and we're, like I said, we're going to continue to talk about that on the other side of this, but first I got to talk to you guys today about bet online. Bet online is your number one source for all your bet- betting needs and sports info. 
Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NHL playoffs and Major League Baseball. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sport wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. BetOnline.net is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Scotty brought up a really interesting point there uh, right before we went to break about this just being like the perfect time to bring in this type of head coach. And I completely agree. I mean, from one reg- one standpoint, too, we talk about how we didn't we didn't even want to bring in a coaching carousel head coach. But it is also incredibly hard to bring in a coaching carousel head coach to a team like the Red Wings, because a lot of these guys who do have NHL head coaching experience want to go to a team that at least they think is going to be a Stanley Cup contender, even if reality and it, you know, Philadelphia Flyers hasn't really set in yet. So it's the perfect time to take a flyer on a new head coach like Derek Lalonde because that core is so young and it's up and coming team. And it's a little, it's it's kind of it's a little unfair because this is what Jeff Blaschel should have been given when Jeff Blaschel took over. Instead, Jeff Blaschel was kind of kicked in the butt and given a team that was aging, getting older, falling apart, and then embraced a full rebuild. This is the type of situation where a guy like Jeff Blaschel should have been brought into. And so to bring Derek Lalonde into the fold now with this team, where it's at with exactly all you just said there at the tail end of the first segment, Scotty, with all the cap space they have and all the youth they have a Calder trophy winner in Morris cider, a guy in Lucas Raymond who finished fourth in the Calder voting and then you have Bertuzzi and Larkin coming off 30 goal seasons, and Larkin would have had more if he had been able to stay healthy, but that's not on him. He just got hurt and injuries happen. And then the possibility of bringing in Edvinson, if you're Derek Lalonde, I mean, you're salivating at the opportunity to get your first head coaching gig with a young core this exciting. And the new voice in the locker room at this time, this team with Derek Lalonde, like they very much could grow together. Very much so. Like, he could learn as a first time head coach, he could learn to be a better head coach as they go. While these young guys learn to make, you know, learn and make mistakes and learn from them at the same time. And then all of a sudden you have a very cohesive unit where you don't have a bona fide Stanley cup champion ready team. And then you have to bring in a new head coach where you have to find that chemistry all over again. You've built that chemistry over the years on the come up years of this team. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I think that the timing is, um, <clears throat> the, I think the timing is perfect. And I think that when you look at my argument against Blaschel for the last, whatever, three years has been, and, and Nolan and I used to talk about it because he was not adamant on firing Blaschel when, uh, well, you know, two two seasons ago now when when we did extend him right um and and my my point was always when was the last time in any sport you saw a rebuild a team fully enter a rebuild where the head coach was the head coach the last time they made the postseason or the last time they were even remotely competitive they tear it all down hit rock bottom tank and then build it all back up again make the playoffs and win a cup or a championship when was the last time you saw that entire start to finish rebuild manned by one head coach where when the team was competitive and when the team is competitive again it was all manned by the same person you haven't it barely exists in history in the history of all sports It's 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 just not how rebuilds work you completely clean house that's part of the deal and you were ultimately right as you usually and, are. <laughs> well, the, okay. Well, let's go on down with that. But Oracle. it's it's a, it's <laughs> right third eye. It's it's a it's just a a you know you sometimes you just need a new voice or some like clearly it wasn't working, and that's why you rebuild because it's not working. That's like the whole point. And so, even though he was kind of the last domino to fall, if I would say from that previous era, right? It's um it's it. Getting a new voice that on the other side of that is key. And I think getting a guy who's a first-time head coach who's done a lot of winning at a lot of different levels 
is is really really smart and i i i truly do like i said even though it's not the the like sexy hire it's not the oh <clears throat> it's my the goodness smart hire right like this is you know it's not gonna break the internet or anything i i think it's such a it's such a good hire and, and i think that um it, it could be looked back at as a sexy hire you know what i mean in in, mm -hmm. in a not very much time like i, I think that this is a a hire that's going to be looked at pretty favorably pretty quickly. Well, and you brought up that, and ultimately, yes, I agree with you all, you know, about the whole, when have you seen a team go into a rebuild and come out of a rebuild and go to a championship team with the same coach? Like that just doesn't happen. But I do agree with what Nolan's sentiment was, is giving Blashill that opportunity, which they did this past season. This was Blashill's opportunity of the year because Correct. of the fact this that Blashill, Blashill didn't get that opportunity. He did this season and the, wheels fell off the message got stale so and then moved on it's the most talent he's had since the last time we were competitive which is sad because yeah. the team wasn't still that talented <laughs> relatively speaking to the rest of the nhl but it's objectively true yeah and so i mean let's so steve eisman spoke obviously a little bit and i have an article up with a couple quotes man i can't um, wait for that presser no oh, it's gonna be so good it's gonna be a fun presser um, Eisman said he has proven himself as an excellent coach at every level and has spent the last four seasons in the National Hockey League as part of a very successful program in Tampa Bay. We feel he is ready to take the next step in his career as the head coach of the Detroit Red Wings. And then Lalonde would tally up, follow, follow up with in his own little interview after he got hired with, I'm ready to get to work with our group. There's a lot. There's a very bright future ahead in Detroit. Regarding what Eisman said, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, Stevie. Yes. I mean, he has seen, and that's why, again, and I, I hate to I hate to beat a dead horse, and we've both said it at this point, but it's not the sexy pick, it, but it's the smart pick. I mean, this is a man who's done, had success at every level, and he has climbed through the ranks, you know, starting with CCHA Ferris State, then onto the NCAA, then onto the ECHL, onto the AHL, into the NHL, now to NHL head coaching gig, just like a prospect would. And as a player, they grow, they take the next step to the next level, they succeed, they take the next step to the next level. And he, especially as an assistant coach of the Tampa Bay Lightning, and I know, again, that argument's going to come back to, well, any assistant coach could have succeeded on the Tampa Bay Lightning. It is, it's not one or the other, guys. And yeah, sometimes there are situations. It's you deeper than that. It's deeper than that. You look at like the Kansas City Royals when they won the World Series. Yeah, they won in spite of their manager. But gross why would we even bring them up that's <laughs> because that it does happen and disgusting. just in, in in the sake of rationale it does happen For but 99 sure. percent of the time when teams win a championship it is part player part coaching staff you need the coaching staff to be available to put those players in positions to succeed to help them grow as players and lalonde had done that as an assistant coach alongside john cooper the tampa bay lightning hadn't won a stanley cup when Derek Lalonde became assistant coach, and now they have. And Derek Lalonde was a part of that. His name is very just as much on the Stanley Cup as Steven Stamkos' name, as Nikita it's, Kucherov. Well, and and like I said, it's it's you know hearing these stories. I'm pretty sure it was Prashant. You know, come on and say how how form how you know he he said he got off the phone with a former player and the the dude talked his ear off about how how great of a coach he was and how great of a motivator he was and and uh, only had good things to say and how pumped he is for like the wings to, to get such a great hire. <coughs> like it's, it's just, it's, it's, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm, I'm as much as the, the general public isn't gonna, you know, freak out about, like we said, like the sexy pick, I love it. And then I'm going to freak out about it. I mean, yeah, that's that's really the end of the line there on that conversation. I don't know what else needs to be said. He's a first-time head coach. He's won two oh, Stanley Cups. Timing. I love doing it before the draft and free agency. Oh, yeah. Eisenman said during I, I the was, exit I was, that he wanted that. Right, exactly. But I, I think there was a speculation, I guess, around the fan base that like maybe they would just wait for as long as possible, and it didn't really matter, and they could wait till whatever. I love, especially if the dude is good at, at you know, motivating players and talking to players and stuff. I love doing it. 
uh, right before we're about to bring in some new talent. Great. Well, great, now this uh, gives LaLonda a voice, too. I mean, right. having that conversation, Eisman obviously gets the final say. Eisman's <clears> going <throat> to make the decision he wants regardless. But getting the input from your head coach is vital. And so now you have your head coach, the Detroit Red Wings have their head coach, to give his input on what he thinks is the best player to take at eight overall. Doesn't mean Eisman's going to listen to it. Eisman might say, no, I'd still prefer this guy. But that input is vital. And especially, it's going to also, that conversation that's going to be had is going to say a lot about their relationship through the rest of his tenure. I mean, decisions on player personnel is a huge part of coach general manager relationship. I mean, we heard about how Blaschel and Eisman would butt heads, but like in a professional manner over whether or not to bring Cider over a year earlier than they did. Mm-hmm. Blaschel wanted him because he was coaching. He was trying to keep his job and the team was awful. And he's like, Eisman, he's like, Moritz Cider would be the best defenseman immediately. Eisman agreed, but he said, it's just not the right time yet. And so that relationship is going to be very, very vital. For sure. For um, sure. The other thing too is, it also confirms that like they probably had Lalonde pegged as their guy for a while. Um, they just had to wait for the Stanley Cup playoffs to end because there was two. There were two trains of thoughts: either they were waiting for Trotz to make his decision, or they were waiting for the Stanley Cup Finals to end, and it was either going to be Halpern or Lalonde as the next head coach, both assistant coaches for the Tampa Bay Lightning. And it it could have been a little bit of both because Trotz didn't make his decision until literally this past week uh, right. that he wasn't going to be a head coach again. But I I just Again, Trotz is my heart pick because Trotz is like st- recent Stanley Cup as a head coach. But my mind always knew that Lalonde was high up on that list just because of that familiarity, which Eisman again just said said so importantly was was going to be part of his search, and also just the fact that it was it was a hire. He I, that was an Eisman guy through and through for the last five years, for sure. Eisen's sure. trying to build what he built in Tampa here in Detroit, guys. And that is something to be very excited about. Absolutely, it is. And, like, even, you know, him versus Trotz, like, um, there's a lot of, well, first off, all the ball jokes are hilarious, but. Um, I don't think so. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> grow, grow up. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, but uh, it's it's. You know, when you talk about the, the, the him versus trots, like, I mean, let's talk about, uh, like, longevity with, like, the team, right? I mean, trots for, for as fantastic as a coach that he is. Again, if you're trying to start a new era within, the, the like, the Red Wings organization, this young youth core going forward, like, trots is, is not a, a young lad, we'll say. Right, he's sixty. Yeah, <laughs> well, right. And and Lalonde is is in his late forties. I'm pretty sure, like forty nine. I think. And just, it I might sound silly saying that out loud, but that decade does make a difference. No, for, I mean people retire, like head coaches in the NHL retire, and in their in their early mid sixties all the time. I mean that that could that's the difference between being the head coach of the Red Wings if everything goes to plan and he ends up being a great coach for the next decade or the next three years. Like you know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah, it makes a difference. So yeah, I think I I. I really do. I I cannot say enough good things about the hire, man. I, I think it's fantastic. Um, I cannot say enough good things about coconut you. brownie chunk. Pu- thank no. you. I you know I like that better. Can we do an ad read about me instead? I mean, I'm down. <laughs> I don't know where to go from here. Anyways, uh, from people who invented healthy and tasty comes the latest gift to your taste buds. You've probably tried the amazing coconut brownie chunk built bar, but guess what? Your friends at Built have given Coconut Brownie Chunk the Puffs treatment. That's right. The Coconut Brownie Chunk Built Bar flavor you love in a delicious, chewy marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. It's like a fluffy cloud of coconut brownie goodness. But stop drooling and listen. They are good for you. Low calorie, low sugar, high protein, and all delicious. Coconut Brownie Chunk Puffs are only here for a limited time. Go to Built.com now to make sure you don't miss out. They are going fast because they taste amazing. All built bars are made with collagen protein, which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits. Eat something that tastes good and is good for you. The best part about built puffs, of course, they taste amazing, but you can enjoy them guilt free because they are actually good for you. They are the perfect treat, perfect when you got a craving, you need to satisfy your sweet tooth, or if you need a quick, healthy snack, they are an excellent source of protein. Delicious coconut. 
rich, sweet brownie, creamy marshmallow. Stop fantasizing. Go to built.com and order your box of coconut brownie chunk built puffs right now. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 and get 15% off your order. That is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Dot com. <laughs> it lacked the uh it lacked the uh the boom you know yeah the boom it, it did it did i appreciate the effort it like it like comes and goes in like waves it's really not fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um uh, scotty as far as the lawn goes as we head into head into segment three here do you have any other thoughts questions concerns that you want to touch on with this guy uh, no, not with Lon. I mean, like the only thing, um, I think the biggest thing that his success is going to be based on year one, because I, I think the expectation is another step forward. Yes. And I think that, um, the biggest thing that I personally will be looking at is a uh, defensive scheme. I think that's a pretty obvious thing that is like the glaring, <coughs> um, like, uh, di- I don't know, difference. Like the easiest thing to tell if, if something's changed or not is going to be on the defensive side of the puck because it was so unbelievably terrible for the second half of last season. So I think that if you're looking at, at, his, you know, Blaschel's defensive scheme was basically like, no matter what the score was, let's just like try not to lose. <laughs> like we could have been up five or down five. It was like, well, like let's try to 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 not lose. Let's try to just like play way too conservative defensively. And so, um, I think that that's the biggest thing is just for me is just going to be seeing what defensive scheme he brings to the table with a team that's going to have Moritz Sider and hopefully a couple free agents. Um, I, I think that there's there's a lot of really fun possibilities for a new head coach to come in and mess with the defense and have the, you know, Calder winner. Um, but I, I think that that's the biggest thing for me is going to be how he's going to change the defense because the the let's just sit back and park the bus for 60 minutes is really – I'm very over it and don't want to see it ever again. Well, I, I completely agree. So <laughs> I have a long list of things I don't want to see out of Derek Lalonde year one. Right. No, um, for Dump sure. and chase. Sure. Get rid right. of that. Get that out of here. Um, I want to see clean zone entry. 60-minute penalty kill. <laughs> yeah, li- I hope Derek Lalonde is listening because I have <laughs> I have a long list of things he needs to not do. Um, no more dump and chase. Special teams has got to improve. Yeah, that's, that that's was the one probably existed. number two besides defensive scheme for me is is special teams. Yeah. The Red Wings cycled through so many special teams coaches, and the special oh. teams never improved. Now, remember, Alex Tangay is still on the coaching staff. Yeah. So clearly, well, for I now, I mean, there's a chance that you know, Lola yes. can come in and just say, "Hey, no." <laughs> but it's very strange that Eisenman would keep him on if he didn't like what Tangay brought. So I, I'm just, I'm, I'm really trying to. Special teams, clean zone entries, and yeah, d- defensive scheme, man. That's that's got to change. Um, but I, I'm not gonna judge Derek Lalonde, or I, sh- I shan't, I shan't judge Derek Lalonde. Wow. Third, third eye, um, based on what Jeff Blaschel did. You know that is unfair. Um, but it's also a low bar. <laughs> so, well, and like the other thing is, I, I think we also need to, to not have uh the expectations be like you know like four seed right like like we we need to we need to realize that this team still lacks a lot of talent and is still in the toughest division in hockey like this you know what i mean like this is this is still a a very much a work in progress and and while this uh this high i you know I, i just don't want people to to set the bar way way too high um, but you can lose games and still have the right coach. You can lose games and still have a good scheme. You can lose games and still have a winning scheme. So I, I think that we, you know, we have to look at it more, uh, more optically through, through that lens. Yeah, I, I'm. Yes, yes, that is. I agree wholeheartedly. I, I just, I'm excited. 
that's the, really all I can be. I mean, this is going to be a, a really interesting year because what you said at the beginning of segment three just holds so true. I mean, this is going to be another year where I don't expect them at the end of next season. I guess a successful season for Lalonde's sake is to be outside the top 10 as a hockey team next season when it comes sure. to the draft. Make a, make a step forward into that mid, middle ground. Now, also, you got to keep in mind, though, if you take that step into the middle ground, you could get trapped there. And you don't want to get right. trapped there. So, like, taking a step forward, but not also settling for that as well. Like, continued step forwards need to be the case. But I, I cannot have – I will not stand for whatever that's worth, but I cannot – take another season like this year where the wheels just fell off. I guess if I were to summarize it, consistency is key for me and whether it's consistently bad or consistently good, the Red Wings this season were a 500 hockey team through February and then everything fell apart. And that just speaks that the, the message got stale. If they can take if their record, they finish next year with a better record and they were consistent in that the entire season then I will consider that a step forward. Because I don't expect them to make the playoffs for everything that you said, because of everything that you said. But it's going to be... Eyes, all eyes are on Lalonde now. And uh, I, I have faith that it's going to be a step forward for this organization. But what kind of step forward remains to be seen? Because again, he has had success at every level, but he's never been a head coach at the NHL before. Agreed. Beautiful. So guys, again, Monday's episode was supposed to be Friday's episode. So you're going to be getting a Juraj Slavkovsky and Logan Cooley profile from Sam McGilligan on Monday. If you hear us refer to things in the, like, talk about it being Friday or something like that, it's because it was supposed to be. I don't know if we did. I don't think we did, but now I did at the end of this episode. So, Yeah, but this is Friday. This is Friday. But we recorded that on Thursday for Friday, but then the line came out, and now that's we recorded for Monday on Thursday. Now you're just explaining what happened. And how do you feel about it Friday, Scotty? How do you feel about COVID? <laughs> not not great. Not a fan? I, I felt a lot better about a lot of things. For sure. Yeah. Not 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 uh not not my favorite thing in the world. But not your least favorite? Uh, one of, probably still not, but one of, yeah, one it's, it's, it's down there. It's down there. It's down there. Yeah. All right. We'll be back with you guys on Monday. Same time, same place. It's your team every day, every day.